So thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone. Thanks for inviting me here today. Thank you also for the interest you have shown in Catalonia and in the Catalan affairs uh, this year and having this uh, special session tomorrow uh, where I'm sure you're going to hear different views of uh, uh, relevant people in Catalonia to try to explain um, what's going on. Um, I think it's important for us, uh, and, and I'm sure you've heard many, many things already that are very interesting during the day today. So I think it's very important, and I want to highlight uh, the main messages or the main facts uh, that you can take home after you leave of, of all these days uh, meeting here. Uh, today in Spain, you have nine political prisoners, seven politicians that are in exile, it's the only country in the EU which has elected representatives who are in prison. Today, there are four political prisoners on hunger strike with the objective of getting access to international justice. There are more than a thousand people who are being repressed for supporting a referendum. There are flagrant violations of human rights, from freedom of, ex of expression to the right to have a fair trial. The Catalan independent movement, which I'm sure you have probably have seen pictures already or heard stories, is a massive, civic-minded and non-violent movement that needs the help of all of you. Of all of you. The, we need the help of your voice because there are those that are trying to silence us through the tensions, threats and persecutions. The Spanish state has the physical force, but they do not have the rational and they do not have moral grounds. On the 6th of, of December this year, it was the occasion for the 14th anniversary, 40th anniversary of the introduction of the Spanish Constitution. A constitution which should have guaranteed the rights, should have guaranteed freedoms, but that has become prison for democracy principles and the application a violation of the most fundamental rights. The Spanish state today condemns two men of peace, Jordi Sánchez and Jordi Cuixart, who are the presidents of the, the main civil society uh, groups for defending the right to protest, and especially for making sure that that right is exercised in a manner that is civic-minded and peaceful. They've been in prison without a trial for more than 400 days. The Spanish state has imprisoned the legitimate government of Catalonia, the one that was democratically elected by the Catalan people for defending democracy and for, for permitting a vote to defend our right to choose how we want to be our future. President Puigdemont, you can see here with Wei Wei, another person in exile, four ministers and two former MPs are now in exile Vice President Junqueras and five more ministers have been imprisoned without a trial for over a year. The Spanish state today condemns the Catalan Parliament Speaker, Karma Furcade, for permitting the political debate in the Catalan Parliament, that is, for doing her job, for guaranteeing the political rights of the elected parliamentaries, such as the freedom of expression and the right to debate. She's been, she's in prison without a trial for more than 260 days. Alongside with all this, the Spanish state is persecuting and investigating 75% of all mayors in Catalonia. That is more than 700 elected members by the Catalan citizens. And they are investigating them for having, for having collaborated with and not impeding the referendum of October the 1st. That is to say, for permitting freedom of expression and democracy in Catalonia. All of them and others, some of whom are traveling with me today, and up to more than 1,000 people from my country are being persecuted by the Spanish judiciary system. And what is their crime? Their crime is to make possible a referendum. Their, their crime is to allow the Catalan citizens to express themselves in a peaceful and in a democratic 
way. The Spanish state today condemns all those Catalans who believe that defending our future freely, peacefully, and democratically is the way to move forward. De facto, they are persecuting 80% of the Catalan population, the 80% of the Catalan population that believe that the solution, the solution is found in voting in the ballot boxes. The Catalan nation has a long history. Some of, the, or some of you may know a bit of it. Uh, and actually, myself, I have the honor of being a member of the government, which is an institution, the Catalan government, which has been, which began in 1359 and is now led by its 131st president. Despite the fact that for a long period of history, our institutions were abolished, our language prohibited, and our culture was persecuted. After the Spanish Civil War, earlier in the 20th century, followed by the long night of the Franco regime, the death of the dictator in 1975, Spain began a democratic transition, and, and the Spanish constitution came into law in 1978. Catalan's po Catalan politicians actively pa participated in the, re in the recuperation of the democracy and in the modernization of the country. For many years, the official history has recorded the Spanish transition as a model of a peaceful one. But today, there's enough historical documentation, enough facts to claim the opposite and to put the official version in question. The passing from the dictatorship to democracy was done without calling into the question anything that happened during the dictatorship and without holding anyone to account for the crimes and injustice committed. Today, Spain still is the second country in the world in consideration of the number of disappeared persons and mass graves, the second one just behind Cambodia. At the same time, <coughs> societies like the Francisco Franco Foundations who praise the memory of the dictator and yearn for the return of that regime are permitted to exist and are subsidized. There are some of the members with a pre-constitutional um, flag. Likewise, many current institutions are, their hair, are the heirs of the Franco regime. For example, the Audiencia Nacional, the court where the Catalan politician prisoners were charged it's a court of exception which has no equivalent in any other European country, and it has its root in the dictatorial regime. These pictures, these demonstrations, are actually legal and subsidized in our country. And the restoration of the democracy also has come from the Franco regime. The king, Juan Carlos, sworn allegiance to the principles of the Franco movement, and he was designed himself by Francisco Franco in person. Not sure we can. Que reciba su excelencia el jefe del Estado y generalísimo Franco la legitimidad política surgida el 18 de julio de 1936. So that was the King of Spain with Francisco Franco alleging to the movement. That he, uh, in, that he inspired. On the 23rd of February 1981, there was a coup d'etat in Spain. The political response afterwards was not more democracy, but rather it was a recentralization and less self-government for Catalonia. The unity of Spain was, and it, and it is today, a supreme good to be maintained. The whole place in the first laws, right after the constitution, were very soon frustrated. And the willingness to advance and the coexistence between the Catalan nation and the Spanish state in the year 2005, the Catalan parliament approved a new statute of autonomy that is the law that regulates the relationship with the, between the Catalan nation and the Spanish government. And it was passed by the Catalan government with 120 votes in favor and only 15 against. After it was passed by the Catalan parliament, it, wa it went to the Spanish Congress that also approved it, and later it went, it went to a referendum with the Catalan people, a referendum that 74% of the votes were in favor. That was supposed 
to establish the new relationship, the new, the new rules, and the way we were supposed to advance in the future between Catalan nation and the Spanish government. However, four years later, uh, there was an unprecedented decision by the Constitutional Court. And what the both parliaments had approved and what the citizens have ratified, the Constitutional Court decided that it was illegal, a constitutional court that was heavily politicized and completely partial. This was a grave development that caused the, ma the vast majority of the Catalans to no longer feel comfortable with Spain. And in the words of the then president of the Catalan government, in no way suspicious of being an independent and an independentist, the socialist Jose Montilla, sentenced that the court had created a, dissatis a dissatisfaction in Catalonia towards Spain in a type that may begin an irreversible process. And he was right. That year, 2010, million and a half people demonstrated in Barcelona under the banner that was saying, we are a nation, we decide. It was the first of many demonstrations year after year that has dazzled the world in the scale, the originality, and their commitment to civil behavior at all time. But the differences between Catalonia and Spain, there has seen also in the way we think about the society, in a way we think about coexistence. Catalonia has, has, has been asking to become a welcoming place for the refugees. Our parliament has legislated against evictions of vulnerable family in favor of equality between women and men, and with determination against uh, in, with determination in the fight against climate change. All this and many, many more laws were considered unconstitutional because any initiative that goes in the way that, that looks different at the world as Madrid sees are being stopped. They have even tried to, oblig uh, to obligate ourselves and to permit animal torture in the form of bullfighting something that was banned many years ago in the Catalan parliament. As a result of this, since year 2012, and every year we've seen demonstrations uh, in Barcelona in the millions. Demonstrations that in favor of the independence in the, in, and that have been correlated also with the results in these elections. These demonstrations that you can see all these colors uh, in the main roads in Catalonia are year after year between one, mil one and a half million people and two million of a society of just seven and a half million people. This is a saying that uh, in Berlin you would have 20 million people protesting and asking for something and always without a broken glass. You can see many pictures on the in, in media with all these uh, colors and also all these ways all these are thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And you can see videos of all the performance. And I invite you to do so because they are very moving. As all this was happening, and all the polls were constantly reporting that 80% of the Catalans are convinced that a referendum of independence is the solution as a way of listening to people, of expressing the society what they want the future to be. In over and over and in more than 20 occasions with different channels and different intermediaries, we've been asked to uh, agree in which form we would have this referendum. Every time we've been asking for the Spanish government to consult the electorate, to ask for people, the response has always been negative. At the same time that David Cameron and Alex Salmon was agreeing on the conditions for the referendum in Scotland, the Spanish president, the former Spanish president, Mariano Rajoy, didn't even dare to ask with our president, President Mas first, and then President Puigdemont. We've tried everything from proposing the Spanish parliament to organize themselves the referendum, asking the transfer of the, compet on the competences for calling the consultations ourselves. In year 2015, it was the previous elections were held in the Catalan Parliament. The unified independent candidacy in favor of the, of the independentist movement won the election, and the independentists got 72 seats out of 135. The candidates 
in four of the independents obtained 48% of the votes, those against just 39%. Carles Puigdemont, who's now in exile, was chosen the 130th president of the Catalan government, and in a matter of months announced that there would be an independence referendum towards the end of 2017. This announcement was at all times accompanied by a proposal of dialogue of, with the Spanish state government from the president, the Catalan government itself, and the Catalan parliament, a way of negotiating when, how, which question, and what are the conditions in order uh, to decide whether the referendum was valid and whether the referendum would be considered winning the yes or winning the no. We were willing to talk about everything. But after five years of refusal to negotiate a referendum, the Catalan government decided to call the referendum itself. And I'm sure you well known has seen and, and you've known what has happened on 1st October 2017 when the Catalans held our referendum. The images of thousands of police, Spanish police, that traveled to Spain to attack young, old men and women, strikes of clubs, rubber bullets, which by the way, they are illegal in Catalonia. They damaged schools in the search of ballots as if they were arms or explosives. 1,066 people were attended for heart, head injuries, fractures, cuts, bruises, anxiety attacks, heart problems, and even one person lost his eye from a rubber, from a rubber bullet. Again, I want to emphasize that that was forbidden by the Catalan parliament years ago. Even that, more than 2 million and 300,000 people were to vote without fear that day, or I would say with a lot of fear, but not something that's going to stop you. And the yes clearly won over the no vote. Democracy went that day in Catalonia, and the Spanish state opposed using repression and persecution. With a pre-democratic use of the Constitution, the state government decided to invent an application of what it's now called the Article 155, meaning sacking the entire Catalan government and the dissolution of the parliament, and therefore ignoring what the electorate had chosen just two years before. And I say pre-democratic with, justif with justification. In 1978, there were two amendments trying to redefine that article and use it for the way it was used. And the two of them failed in the debate and they were voted against. As a result of that, they left the Catalan institutions in the, ha in the hands of the state government. That is, they suppress the Catalan institutions and they provoke a judicial attack against the members of the government and the parliament speakers committee, imprisoning them. On, on, uh, the president of the Spanish government called for an election in Catalonia. And again, with the idea that the pro-independentist forces, they were going to lose. They were going to lose because they had their leaders in prison or they had their leaders in exile, but that didn't happen. The vice president of the Spanish government actually boosted during the campaign and explaining that they have been taking out the leaders and that the end of the independentist movement was there. Despite of this, despite all the difficulties, the independentists show its strength and obtain an, again an absolute majority in the Catalan parliament. But as a result of this, the Spanish state has not respected the result. It has manipulated what the people decided to vote on 21st December, in a week from now it's going to be the first anniversary, and, and therefore it manipulated the very principle of democracy. Up to four occasions, the judge was impeded the decision of who was going to be the next president of the Catalan government. The president of the Catalan government is elected among the people that has ob have obtained a chair in the parliament and only among their members voting who's going to be the next president. After four occasions, the independentist majority has chosen who was going to be the next president. And a judge from Spain has stopped that, stopped a candidate who was a member of the Catalan parliament and has all they're all his political rights intact. That violates both the candidate's right, but those that wanted to vote for them, but the very right of everyone who participated in an election. That is a unique case in Europe. 
but there is more. There's a lot more. Among the MPs chosen as members of the Catalan Parliament, and as a result of the repression and polit of the political dissidency, the following has happened. One MP didn't even take the seat because of the judicial consequences that it could have entailed. Seven MPs have renounced to their seat because of the impossibility of the keep doing their job. Five MPs are in prison, two MPs are in exile, and four more are being accused and therefore restricted in which debates they can participate or not. That is to say that 25% of the independentist majority in the Catalan parliament are not free to exercise their responsibility to represent the Catalan people, who in effect, they are not free either. This is without counting all of us who are threatened, coerced, or even spied upon on daily basis. In the last two years, from the months leading up to the 1st October 2017 the ref of the referendum and up, till now, and up till now, the Catalan people have shown our rights to have been continued, continually limited, infringed, and stepped upon. Just an example, the rights that have been violated are the right of free of assembly, the right of freedom of speech, the right of secrecy to our correspondence, the right to protest, the right of a fair trial, the right to defense in a trial, the right to be judged by the judge determined by law, the right to vote, the right to hold a political office. Last Monday, as you all know, we celebrated the 17th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a declaration that it's more necessary today than ever, because although we have made many advances in the, defen in the defense of human rights, Europe is seeing now how they are going backwards in many points of the continent, not only, on, not only in Spain, but Spain is one of the cases. The violation is so bad that four political prisons, prisoners are today on hunger strike to protest for their blocking of the constitutional court, their access to the European justice. The, Consti the Spanish constitutional court is violating the right to due process by holding up for over a year the proceedings which should take less than a month, and so blocking their access to the European Courts of Human Rights for over a year. This is the fear that Spanish state has, which denies European justice to their citizens, who are European themselves. The European system, which by the way, in the case of President Puigdemont, made it clear that it saw no evidence of crime here in, in Germany. Although everything that I have recounted, and you can see of the workings of the Spain, of, of the Spanish judiciary system as one of the main uh, problems in Catalonia and also in Spain itself, uh, the issue is objective. Spain occupies the 23rd ranking out of 28th in citizens' confidence. Half of the Spanish population, they, they have a bad or a very bad perception of the judiciary system. In contrast, in Germany, three quarters of the people are confident in its justice. In January 2018, the Greco Monitoring Report Group concluded that Spain is the only state that has not fulfilled implementing any of the recommendations made five years earlier to improve the independence of the judiciary system. In the text, it has reiterated that the political authorities should not be involved in any case in the selection process of the judiciary change. But the contrary is actually happening. happening. Just a few weeks ago, the spokesman in the, in the Spanish Senate, the spokesman of the, of the Popular Party, sent a WhatsApp message to all the senators in his party referring to the new president of the judiciary and congratulating that it was the perfect way that they had to control the Supreme Court. This does just not affect the independentist movement, although, although we, we actually feel it in, our, in, in first person, but prison sentences have been applied to singers, to people posting on Twitter, to civic activists, books have been banned, journalists have been threatened, investigated, and the police have been broken in media outlets. Or the application of the anti-terrorist law for a barroom fight in Alsasua where the prosecutor was asking for up to 375 years of prison for young, 
for, for eight young people that are just some examples, just for a bar room fight. Because of all, the, of all these, the European Court of Human Rights has sentenced against Spain in 48 occasions for violating the right of a fair trial, 16 occasions for undue length of legal procedure, 11 occasions for convictions without due investigation, and six occasions for violating the freedom of expression. That is Spain as it stands now. Before the summer, the, the independentist parties and the progressive parties in Spain made possible a change in government in Madrid. Help, of course, by a clear situation of generalized corruption of the government of Mariano Rajoy. Pedro Sánchez is the president of Spain through this alliance, which had a willingness to explore all possibilities to resolve this conflict, which I remind you is exclusive a political conflict. The good works of the first weeks have not resulted in any development. We put all our hopes and the speeches that uh, Pedro Sánchez was making on the very first week they were calling for political solution. But this reality, there has been no steps forward, and it has been very disappointing and devastating. The Popular Party and the Socialist Parties, they always have agreements with each other when it comes to repressing the Catalan minority or defending the unity of Spain, or by the way, preserving the status quo. Populars and Socialists together, they have blocked parliamentary investigation on the terrorist attacks of Bar in Barcelona, which are presumably linked with security forces in Spain. They have blocked investigations of the royal family finances, as well as they have blocked proposals to stop selling arms to uh, the Saudi regime. There has been no investigation into the violence of the 1st October, in spite of such commitment before the European Commission. And the ultimate person for the violence has been con decorated with, um, has been condecorated, and, that, and the ideologic person behind the repression has been elevated to the State Council. The government spokesperson has been there to say the same as they were saying during the Mariano Rajoy government, that the images the international press took on 1st October, they were fake. And, you, and they have a foreign minister so obsessed with Catalonia that has created political diplomatic conflicts every single day. This very week, uh, we've seen that while the Catalan government keeps proposing dialogue, keeps proposing negotiation, negotiation, keeps proposing political solutions, the government in Madrid or the, or the people that are associated to the same socialist party are threatened to suppress Catalan institutions, are threatened to illegalizing political parties, and they want to win by the force what they could not win in the ballot boxes in elections a year ago. And we keep wondering who thinks that attacking the Catalan institutions, who thinks that putting political, uh, to, to have political prisoners and putting uh, the leaders in prison or in exile is going to solve anything. Who think that any of this is going to change the mind of the millions of Catalans that are in favor of independence. We don't under, we, it's difficult for us to understand what Spain is afraid of. Why is it Spain afraid of democracy? Why is it Spain afraid of the will of the people? Why is it Spain afraid of facing, of facing the real problems, the corruption that is widespread, or the lack of independence of some media outlets or the judiciary system? If 80% of the people want to have a referendum, it is very responsible to prevent it. We are not going to give up on being Democrats. We are not going to give up on being independentists because of the repression. The unity of Spain cannot be more important than democracy itself. This is a situation, this situation which Catalonia and its independentist movement find itself suffering today, a movement that is profoundly civic-minded, democratic, and European-focused. It was 60 years ago that the beautiful idea of an integrated Europe was first launched, and that it started in response to the first half of the 20th century, which had just seen two world wars and millions of deaths. From that destruction to the construction 
of a Europe of welfare, progress, liberty, and human rights. A Europe that we Catalans have always looked towards with hope. Because we've always felt Europeans, and we've always have seen Europe as the solution. Because Catalonia and the Catalan politics have always had an element to its character that is undoubtedly and profoundly pro-Europe, a clear feeling that belonging to the European project. But that, which for many years was the hope, today is seen with some skepticism and confusion. Because today, that Europe of right and liberties is a Europe that's looking the other way while democracy is being trampled upon. If your commitment is to a Europe where citizens may have more power to decide, where, where, there has been more where there has to be more integration, more prosperity, more democracy, you have to know and ask about what's going on in Catalonia. Because Catalonia today is not an internal Spanish affair. The right of self-determination is a European matter because the rights and liberty are in danger under the repression of the Spanish state. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I think it's a very appropriate question because it's in our same fight that we feel every day to keep moving forward. Um, from the Catalan government point of view, we know that the Catalan nation and the Catalan citizens have the right to self-determination. And we, as the government, are not going to remove this right from the people because it would not be correct. Um, it's true that, although we are never going to fight to, to consider it in this way, but it seems like it's difficult for the Spanish government uh, to voluntarily uh, start arranging and co-organizing a referendum. We still feel that both the internationalization of our cause, and that's why we're here today, that's why we have part of our government on exile, that's why they took the decision of going in exile and keep talking about our situation. So we feel internationalization of the process is very important. But we also have uh, a, a very mobilized uh, citizenship uh, that they keep pushing and they keep demonstrating and they keep being very actively in fighting, uh, not only for independence, but we want to insist that we mainly uh, uh, fight for democracy. And also, when we are outside of uh, Catalonia, we don't try to convince anyone to be in favor of the independence of Catalonia. That we understand it's something that the Catalans must decide on themselves. So we only try to convince people to support our right to decide democratically our future. Um, so we understand it might take more time or less time, but the but that we have a majority of the people in Catalonia that want to decide things voting, and that majority is very solid. It's 80%, and it has 80% for a long time. And by the way, this is the same 80% that it's against repression, that they feel the government should not be in prison. And it's the same 80% that uh, they don't want uh, the monarchy to be in place, and they want uh, a republic. So we have a consolidated uh, mass of the, of the citizenships that are in favor of solving with a political solution. So we hope uh, this will help a lot, and also especially the internationalization of the cause. Thank you. Uh, the end it will be a happy one as long as you, as long as you, uh, your principle is to protect human rights. Um, if the message countries are going to send the world anywhere in the world is that it's OK. If you win a war, then you can be independent. If you want to vote, you are not going to be independent. Uh, that, in the 21st century, it's outrageous. Um, the Constitutional Court, uh, the, Consti the Spanish uh, Constitution has ways of, pre of uh, allowing the citizenship to express the way uh, they feel about different issues. So there are different ways within the Spanish constitution, and we've always defended this, that would allow the Catalans to express themselves about their willingness uh, to be an independent nation. Um, so the problem is not a legal one. And if it would be a legal one, uh, I've seen the Spanish government changing the Spanish constitution in one week in the middle of August in order 
uh, to fulfill all the Troika uh, obligations that they were that they were uh, um, uh, that they were putting into the Spanish government. So it's not a it's not a legal issue because the means are already there. So once you allow for people to express themselves, then there are political ways of solving. In the same way, there was a political way of working on the German unification, and there was a political way of uh, working in the um, in the, in in, uh, in Great Britain or in Canada. Um, and again, we are willing to go to a referendum uh, negotiated with the Spanish government, with all the conditions. Uh, what we need to fight is for the democracy, not for the independence itself. Because I'm an independentist, but there are many people in my country that are not, and they still want uh, to have a referendum held. Why? Because we cannot continue being in this limbo state where the only thing that you talk in Spanish politics is about the future of Catalonia. There were recently held elections in the south of Spain, uh, which is a region with the highest unemployment, the lowest economic growth, the lowest productivity, and they have in any social and economic dimension, they are the ones that are more backward of the entire Spanish country. The main topic in those elections for their, for their parliament, for the regional parliament, it was the future of Catalonia. Spain cannot keep going in this way. I don't know if they don't want to face the issues that they have. I don't know if they don't want to face how they, uh, they make their, their economy more productive, how they make their society less corrupt, how they make uh, the fulfillment of all the conditions that the UN is putting in fulfillment of human rights, fight against poverty, etc., etc. But they cannot keep being stuck just in this unique issue of what the Catalans should do or not should do. The Catalans should do what the Catalans want to be. And, and I think it's important to send a message to all democracies in the world that solving things politically, negotiating, and through the decision of the citizens is the way to go. Otherwise, you keep having, I'm not saying it for you, eh? but you keep choosing, choosing examples of wars that they decide the borders in the countries and then OK, if you win a war and you have put a border, that has to remain like that itself for the rest of the history, because there was a war that has decided that border. That's completely rational. That's immoral. And that's definitely not the way we should go forward. Okay, I think that the parallelism is very interesting, because what happened in Catalonia and the relationship between Catalonia and Spain was actually the reverse one. So between. Uh, 1978 and, uh, and 77, the, the, at the beginning of the transition, until 2010, so for many years, uh, for up to 30 years, what you are describing is actually the way the vast majority of the Catalan political movement, the Catalan political movement was was moving forward. So with, within all these 30 years, uh, independentists were a minority in Catalonia. And what uh, people were moving forward is to having more autonomy, have more decision uh, in how, what do we do with the revenue, how we spend uh, our money, how we deal uh, with all the different issues that affect Catalan society. We had, in some periods, a strong relationship uh, with Spain. We actually were an important actor uh, when Spain um, was included in the European Union. We were a very important actor when you had to do very difficult reforms of, uh, in Spain. And, we've, and we believe we've been very loyal uh, partners through all these years. All this, it got broken in 2010. So all these movements of having gaining more autonomy and negotiating things, and now I give you this, but then you support me this, and m start moving forward because we were coming from from a long time of dictatorship uh, that made the cut the, the Spanish uh, uh, country very backwards uh, in terms of uh, institutions, but also in terms of e uh, economy. So we were moving forward in having a modern. Uh, state. Um, and then in 2010, all got reversed. So after, um, it is a very crucial date because before then there was a negotiating with a law between the relationship between the Catalan nation and the Catalan government and the Spanish government. It was very difficult to pack, to, to, to negotiate and agree on that law. Um, 
we manage for the two chambers, the Catalan and the Spanish one, to say, okay, there's a majority in Catalonia and a majority in Spain that favor this law. It went into vote with Catalan people. 74% of the Catalan people voted in favor. And then uh, those that lost, that they had 15 seats out of 135 in the Catalan parliament, nowadays they have only four, but those people, they sent it to the constitutional court. A constitutional court that it's very politicized and that they were ruling, uh, that they were close to their, to their way of uh, seeing the world. Uh, and the constitutional court, they decided that what the Catalan uh, parliament voted, what the Spanish government voted, and what the citizens have voted in a referendum, it didn't matter because they were going to decide how the relationship between Catalonia and Spain it should be. That moment, which it was uh, 2010, the summer of 2010, has changed history. And then since then forward, you see that what was a minority uh, of in uh, Catalan politicians, the independentist movement, has been steadily growing, 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 growing. And with each aggression, with each repression, with each person that goes uh, to prison, with each person that has to go into exile, the dissatisfaction of the Catalan citizenship with the Spanish government is increasing. There's no way of seducing Catalan, uh, the Catalans by uh, threatening of suppressing Catalan institutions. So it's very difficult to reverse this. It could be if, uh, if moving forward uh, in the future uh, that once you get uh, a referendum and you win the referendum and so on, to have a, a, an equal partnership and collaborate in many things. Uh, the Catalan uh, politicians have nothing, absolutely nothing against Spanish people. It's only that we don't want to be ruled by a government in Madrid. We don't want to be subject to the Spanish judiciary system that systematically rules against us. So I think the way of working in the partnership it has to go when we are both in an equal situation. Otherwise, we never have the upper hand. Whatever rule we agree, whatever decision uh, we, we decide to go forward, they have all the power. And whenever they violate even the agreements that we have, we have no way to defend ourselves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Actually, um, I must admit that um, what happens in Catalonia today, I would have never thought, if you tell me that this was going to happen, that it would happen if you tell me two years ago. If two years ago you tell me, they're going to come, they're going to shut down your parliament, they're going to take out the Catalan government, the Catalan government, which institution, and, and it's building itself, it has been there for over 600 years. Uh, they're going to put them in jail, and, or they're going to be sent in exile, if you tell me this was going to happen um, two years ago, I would have never believed. If you tell me two years ago, and let me see if I can find a picture, that something like this was going to happen, that you have Spanish military police going to take a ballot box, a ballot box in front of the old ladies that they were trying to defend the ballot boxes, I would have never thought that would happen. Actually, when in the weeks coming to the referendum, uh, we were always saying, I think we were a little bit naive. Well, we know now we were a little bit naive. If we ever get this picture, we have won. Because Europe is never going to allow for a military police, the Spanish police, to take out a ballot box. And we also said, the Spanish police is never going to allow to have a picture like this, to have people that are completely peaceful, men, women, all ladies, sitting them in front of the schools where people were going to vote to defend a ballot box. And they had to send this police in the thousands from Spain in order to do this job. So we, all, we, we always thought that either of these two images were going to wake up the conscious, especially of the European countries, that that could not be tolerated in Europe in 21st century. Instead of this, what we are seeing are even things like this, that 
Musicians have to go in exile in Spain because of the lyrics they write. They have to leave because they are saying things against the king of Spain. People were, uh, were um, sentenced because they were burning pictures of the king of Spain and the, and the court of human rights had to give them and say no, what they were doing is freedom of speech and they can do this. So we were never thought that this could happen and it's happening. But what we are a little bit surprised and a little bit concerned is that although uh, we are seeing more and more of the European citizens awakening and having more knowledge, there was the other day this um, poll uh, within many different um, European countries, there was, and they were asking them about what they know about the Catalan situation. So we know that many, many more European countries, they know about the Catalan situation, especially in Germany, in Belgium, in Switzerland, and in Scotland, because it's where our exiles are there. So, so, it, so it has had a very big impact. And there's the per growing uh, perception that Spain is an authoritarian government and, and that the repression is happening. So public opinion is changing in Europe, but we would like also to have more courage of the European politicians and say, look, you, cannot, you can simply not do this. You can oppose independence, but you cannot violate human rights. You cannot put pe people in prison just because you don't like what they think. The, the Spanish Constitutional Court in 2004 said you have the right to be independentist, you have the right to have a party that is independentist, and that's why up until now we've been able to go into elections and winning elections. Now there are some voices of preeminent uh, people in, in, uh, in, Spanish, uh, in Spanish politics that they are calling for illegalizing our parties. That is super dangerous. We have members of our parliament that are in prison. That, in the European context, only happens in Turkey. We went into campaigning. I was directing, as you said, uh, the campaign for my, for my group. The number one in the list was in exile. The number two, who's the president of the, of the, um, of the parliamentary group, is in prison. This is how we went to elections a year ago. And we managed to win these elections, but we managed to win in a completely unfair way. They were putting all the ways for us to not win the elections and thinking that by repressing the population, you were going to stop what is happening. By repressing the population, you were going to stop people thinking what they think and expressing them how they are expressing themselves. Um, I, I, I already said one of it. I think we were a little bit naive in thinking that there were some things that they were never going to be allowed. Um, we've heard many times, and you were referring to the Basque country, and, and I grew up during the transition, and I grew up, my family is actually from the Basque country. Um, so I grew up during the time when there was terrorism. Always what we heard when we were growing up is that without violence, you can talk about everything. That was the sentence that if we haven't heard thousands of times, we've never heard it. Without violence, you can talk about everything. Well, our movement, which is completely peaceful, it has this result. You see all these uh, yellow ribbons in, the, in some of the seats? These are the parliamentaries that are in prison. We keep their seats empty every single time the parliament is meeting to remind everyone that they should be there. Sometimes we actually have their families attending in the upper part over there is where the visitors are uh, to feel that they are also part of the parliament. There are some of there are some of the of my colleagues in the parliament that they are unable to look at the faces of their families because all these people, the ones that are that they should be in their seat where the yellow ribbons are, where are there, they were also members of the parliament two years ago or a year ago, in the, in the past term. And they were the colleagues of all these other people. And some of them, they think it's fine that they are in prison. And probably some of them, they would think that some of us, the ones we are on the left, that might, we might be in prison as well. 
Um, so uh, what we did wrong? We probably did wrong many things. Uh, we also are on the weak side, so we try to not to um, uh, hurt ourselves too much with the mistakes, but just learn about themselves. But, but I truly think we were a little bit naive, and I myself completely uh, on this dimension, because we thought that things like this would never happen. Thank you, everyone, for listening.